Well, good evening. We're going to be uh, studying Proverbs tonight. My name is Pastor Scott Larson, in case you're joining us for the first time. Glad that you're here with us uh, to join and study in our week four of Proverbs. And uh, we've had some uh, good ones so far, and I'll, I'll review that in just a moment and jump right in. But let me uh, uh, start with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for uh, those words of wisdom that you've given us, not just words of wisdom that um, are, are helpful for our lives, but are a real guiding force for uh, uh, how things work in this world. Uh, for you are the Lord that, and you made this world, and we thank you for uh, giving us um, a user's guide, so to speak, of, of how things work in general. We realize that we take these Proverbs as, as uh, both uh, wisdom of, of you know, people giving to others, but we also do take them as holy scriptures because they are included within uh, the holy, uh, holy scriptures, within the Holy Bible. And we thank you that uh, your Holy Spirit has superintended them. I pray, Lord, that you would be with us as we study through this and that these would be your words and not my words alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm glad that you're with us, and uh, we're going to start in week four of Proverbs, and the, the goal has been thus far is to study um, uh, the, some basics about Proverbs with uh, realizing that we're never going to be able to get through all of the Proverbs. We're not even trying to. Uh, we're just trying to do a, a general overview, and I've said before what I'm, I, my goal was with Proverbs was to give uh, a general overview to what Proverbs were, and we did that mostly in the introdu introductory, introductory week, uh, but also to talk about uh, some things that I've found helpful uh, the, uh, thematically or things that uh, I've found have popped up uh, during my ministry, either in something that I've learned uh, the lesson uh, or that I've helped teach it. Uh, I, other things that people have asked about, some of them are very straightforward ones you've heard many times. Other ones are going to be maybe a little goofy or a little bit, a little more off the beaten path. And so I, I kind of enjoy that too. Ones that are really, uh, really speak to certain aspects of theology. Just a, a bit of a, a, a mishmash of different things, but it is God's word. And so it's all, um, it's all helpful and useful uh, for reproof and for learning. And um, as we dig into week four, we're going to talk about something that thematically is uh, is pretty big in Proverbs, um, more than a lot of other places. Uh, at least it's more overtly stated in Proverbs than it is other places, but in other places it kind of it, it holds true as well. So let me just dig right in here. Okay, so when I say that we're going to take a look at some wisdom from God, I of course mean that we're using Proverbs not just uh, some Proverbs of men, but the book of Proverbs, and uh, which is then part of the scripture, and thus it is the word of God. And we're going to talk about this week, laziness and productivity from a biblical perspective. Laziness and productivity from a biblical perspective. Now, we're not going to do the full-orbed discussion about laziness, productivity. We're just going to talk about some of the specific things on ones that I've picked out for this week. Okay, so uh, just a quick review. We're not going to do a review of, of, um, of Proverbs and such. We did that largely in the introductory week. Uh, but in week two, we did how do we get started on wisdom. We covered Proverbs 1 and Proverbs 9. And then last week, we talked about can we understand. And we covered Proverbs 25, verses 2 through 3, and a few others that we picked up in there as well. Um, can we understand? Can we even understand the Word of God and understand God's Proverbs? Uh, and then week four, uh, we're digging into laziness and productivity from a biblical perspective. All right, so let's just keep moving right along. Okay, if you missed the past few weeks, I did put this in here. If you missed the past few weeks, you might want to go back and take a look at those. You can review those on our YouTube channel. Uh, you, If you have any problems getting a hold of that or figuring out how to do that, let us know here at the church and we can uh, direct you to that. Uh, but if you have a YouTube account or you're used to using YouTube at all, you can certainly look those up and they'll probably come right up uh, based on what other things you watch as well. But if you miss those, you want to go back and take a look because I'm going to give a more fuller explanation 
of things during those weeks. And then we talked about what a proverb is and what a proverb isn't and what the goal of proverbs as a book and what a proverb in general is uh, the goal of and how we should understand proverbs in the context, that should be a large P, proverbs, the book, in the context of biblical literature. And we talked about a lot of other things too. All right, so let's keep uh, plugging along. Um, week four topic is laziness and productivity from a biblical perspective. Okay, now laziness and productivity. And the first one I pick, I did not put the chapter in there for some reason. It's chapter six, verses six through 11. Uh, chapter six, verses six through 11. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer, no ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at har harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. In some, in some versions, it, it uh, oopsie, wrong one. Uh, in some versions, it says uh, like a bandit or a thief in the night. There's different different ways, but the the, the meaning is clear uh, that uh, that uh, uh, laziness leads to uh, poverty and, uh, and scarcity. So let's go and look at certain parts of this. Um, I'm just going to pull this apart a little bit. There was my <laughs> heading Proverbs 6, 6 through 11. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. Okay, what is, what is it saying here? It's saying go to the ant. What it means is take a look at the ant. Just consider uh, the ant. Look look at the ant, how it runs around madly. And I've, I've done this before when I was out, uh, you know, I've been out at the track running or I'm doing different things. And, and they have these lines of ants and you're just like, man, they look like they've got somewhere to go. They've got something to do. They're always moving around. You're not even sure if they entirely know where they're going, but they're headed there. And it's it, and these ants are just all over the place. They're carrying things that are, you know, 30 times as heavy as they are or whatever. I don't know how it is, but they can carry immense loads for their, their size. They're moving things around. They seem to be organized. But yeah, what it says here, it has no commander, no overseer or ruler. It's not trying to say there isn't a queen ant. It's just saying, look, these ants are all, kind of all uh, you know autonomous. They kind of work on their own. I know they, they uh, interconnect, but the point here is saying, look, it, it's not that it has somebody that's a slave driver or that it's a, a commander that is giving directions and so forth. They're just running. They're just running and getting things done and storing things up. It stores its uh, provisions in um, in summer and gathers its food at harvest. And so it's saying, consider this ant. Consider how hard it works. What's it going to do in comparison? Well, he's going to he's going to uh, say, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? And he's basically saying, you know. <laughs> He's imagining that the person's there in bed, not doing anything. I mean, kind of like you know, a father talking to his son, or or, or a, a mother talking to the daughter, or or uh, somebody speaking to somebody who's being extremely lazy and saying, "How long are you going to sit around? What, what what are you what are you up to? What are you doing? When were you going to get up from your sleep?" And so it's well, we'll talk more about about sleep and rest and so forth a little. But in in verse ten, it digs right into this one. It says. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, but I want to kind of point out right here what's basically it's kind of giving this picture of somebody who's lying back and oh, just kind of just just chilling and doing nothing for you know hours upon hours upon hours upon hours on end even after he's woken up he just finds a way to be able to take other naps and finds a way to to just you know take a break even though you're like what are you taking a break from you haven't been doing anything but yeah it's always break time and it says a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands of rest and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man what he's trying to do is he's trying to give this sudden jolt to your system to say look you just can't lie around because there are implications, there are um, repercussions, I should say, of when you do things like that. When you lie around, do nothing, you're doing something. You're lying around doing nothing. That's what you're doing. And when you do something like that, the repercussions, the, the, the pushback from that is that things will happen to you. Things will happen to you if you are lazy. 
Okay. So let me, um, and I just kind of highlighted that a little bit. Now, one thing I, I wanted to mention on this is that um, uh, this verse right here, I'm going to show you the other places that this show, shows up. This same verse shows up uh, virtually, if not exactly word for word, uh, later in, the, uh, in Proverbs. And, uh, and we're going to, it's in Proverbs 24, and we're going to pick that up in just a little bit. But um, it was a, a proverb that was put to, put to task by Solomon, uh, and, and it's picked up later. And I don't think that should throw anybody off, the fact that it shows up twice. Uh, in fact, it just kind of emphasizes the importance. They're used in different, a little slightly different, uh, I shouldn't say they're used in different contexts. They're used in, in different ways uh, to make the point of what the particular places are doing. But it's kind of a nice little double memorization trick. You could memorize the one and then you'd also know uh, Proverbs 24 verses 33 through 34 at the same time because it's the same verse. Okay, so how does a sluggard uh, go about planning out, uh, goes and plans out his day? Uh, Proverbs 26 verses 13 through 16. A sluggard says, there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion roaming the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. A sluggard is, is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. Okay, what are, what's going on here? Well, a bunch of things are going on here. Uh, and I'm going to pull them apart one at a time too. But um, remember, as we talked about in the introduction, Proverbs sometimes jumps across many different uh, things. It's kind of like different facets of the same diamond or different ways to look at the same thing. And so you're start getting a full orbed picture. When you want to render something for a computer, sometimes you need to have multiple pictures from different directions so that you can understand the depth and how everything fits together to be able to then put it into a computer rendering to understand how things work three-dimensionally. And it's giving us a third dimension to sluggardness. It's giving us a third dimension to laziness. And I like the word sluggard. I use that a lot because it gives this idea of just this slug moving around. Not laziness as in like in, as if it's like I'm making a judgment upon a person. It's just saying, look, you're acting like a slug. Don't do that. Um, all right, so let's, let's jump into this first one here, right? And it says, a sluggard says, there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion roaming the streets. Well, what's, what does this mean? This is kind of, I've had somebody bring up, they're like, what in the world does this mean? Actually, it's really simple when it comes down to it. A sluggard is basically coming up with an excuse why he can't go outside, why he can't leave the doors. He said, oh, you know, I, 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 I know I, I need to go to work, but man, there's a lion out there. There's, a, there's something scary. There's scary stuff. Now, it doesn't have to, you don't have to say, oh, it's always somebody would say a lion. They're just using it as an example. I mean, we'd have the same sort of thing of saying, oh, I'm afraid to go out because there might, this might happen. Or I'm afraid to try and uh, uh, to talk to somebody about uh, Christ because, you know, they might judge me. Or uh, I'm, I'm afraid to, uh, uh, to go and, um, uh, you know, try out for uh, the, the choir because, you know, maybe my voice isn't good enough. Or I, I'm afraid to use my gifts because of this. Or I'm afraid to do that because what if they don't like me? All these different things where uh, a slugger basically says, well, I, 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 I would go out, but I, I, you know, it, it's dangerous and you can't blame me for being dangerous, but you, so you shouldn't blame me. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I'm, uh, I'm scared. Okay. Well, obviously that's kind of funny. And I, all of these are these, I like these Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 26, 13 through 16, because they, they're really almost make it humorous and humorously ridiculous, almost like a three stooges sort of thing. Uh, verse 14 says, as a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. I think I did this wrong here. I, how I, yes, I did. Okay. Well, let's not worry about it. I can just kind of page through them faster. Um, as a door turns on its hinges, hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. It's basically saying, you know, just imagine like a hinge, the sluggard, he goes and gets up and he sits back down. A slugger goes in, oh, I gotta lie down, go to sleep. It's like he's like you didn't even get your out of your bunny slippers, and yet you want to get back in bed. And it's just basically saying, yeah, do any excuse he can find, he's just gonna jump right in back into bed because you know that's really where he wants to be. 
A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. I love this one too. He's, he's, a, he's, he's too lazy to eat, you know? Something that he needs to do in life. He's so lazy. It's not just that he doesn't want to work. It's the fact that he doesn't even want to work so hard that he's going to, he says, oh, I need to eat. And he's so lazy. He, he, oh, this Dorito, this is way too heavy. Uh, I couldn't be bothered. Oh, I, I, I was going to eat, but you know what? The, the microwave, you know, I, I just did, I couldn't press 30 seconds. Uh, you know, the, it, whatever it is, it, it basically saying, you know, he, he, he goes to, to, to raise up his food, his nourishment that he needs to continue on with life. But, you know, I, he just can't. That's too much work, you know. And so it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but it, it does make fun of that. And then this last part is, it's almost a non sequitur, and we have to, to realize that this last part says, um, a sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. What, it's, what is this saying? Okay, what it's saying is that uh, there's something about lazy people who seem to think that they are the epitome of wisdom, that somehow they've got it all figured out. Uh, so many times that you don't find many lazy people who say, you yeah, know, my problem is it's just I'm just a lazy bum and I don't do anything. They tend to find excuses. They tend to find reasons. They tend to, to think, come up with rationalizations or rationalize uh, why they do things uh, as, as, as actually a smart thing. You know, well, I, I, I really I yeah, I need to get some extra sleep because, you know, with uh, all this going around, I don't, don't want to you know be extra tired. So I, I, I better I better get some extra sleep so to keep healthy or I better. Do, and it's not saying that you shouldn't get sleep to be healthy, but it's just that the, the, the sluggard is going to find all sorts of, of rational and wise ways. And then they can look at somebody else and say, oh, that person doesn't know what they're talking about when they're saying, hey, get back to work. Nah, yeah, you know what you're talking about. I know what's right. And, and something about the sluggard uh, uh, sees themselves as kind of the uh, epitome of, of wisdom, which is, of course, the ironic uh, opposite. Okay, so just kind of, the, uh, I don't have a lot more to talk about in this, but I just want to kind of uh, wrap this up a little bit. So how does laziness uh, versus rest, uh, you know, how does laziness kind of reflect on rest? And I'm going to go just to the slideshow here. Um, how does this reflect on the concept of laziness versus rest? Are, uh, are there uh, those these proverbs here that are indicating uh, that as humans we shouldn't uh, rest at all? You know, some of them kind of indicate this, such as, you know, if you take Proverbs 6, 4, it says, give your eyes no sleep and give your eyelids no slumber. Okay, so what are these things saying here? Are they basically saying, you know, you're, you're never to sleep? In fact, uh, advocating that we go and, and sleep like three or four hours uh, a night, and if you slept over that, that wouldn't make any sense. No, no, there's a lot of parts of the Bible that talk about rest. There's a lot of parts that say, you know what, you need to rest. Although it's interesting that um, in our modern society, we, t we tend to talk about how the fact that we don't rest very much, but it's interesting that... I think that's a bit of a misnomer. This is a little bit of a, a, a sidetrack here, but uh, it's a bit of a misstatement that we don't rest enough. It's true we don't rest enough, but the issue is not that we don't uh, rest enough versus doing work. The ten tendency we have is that we don't rest enough from entertaining ourselves, uh, you know, myself included. That there's sometimes that I'm like, oh, I want to go to sleep, but oh, I just want to watch this, or I just want to do this, or I just, I want to, sometimes I want to read something. Sometimes it, it can be something productive, but the point is, is that uh, we don't get enough rest, but it's not because we don't have free time. I mean, uh, there's plenty of free time. I mean, I, I give the example that sometimes uh, I don't have the statistic at my fingertips because I'm just going off the cuff a little bit here on, on this subject, but the number of hours that the average male watches football per week is like 20, if not football, excuse me, watches uh, TV per week, including football and other things like that. It's like 21 hours or 23 hours or a, a, a huge amount. And I suppose nowadays with YouTube, it's over that kind of gets combined in with that screen time sort of concept. But the point is, is I'm not saying you shouldn't watch TV, but if you say you have 21 hours out of 168 to be able to watch TV and, and out of that, that's waking hours is even less of that. That you say, if you have the time to do that sort of thing, but you don't have time to do productive things. You're like you're you're mismanaging your your rest time, your 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 awake time, and so you're you're misprioritizing things. So I think uh, the the Bible says we're supposed to rest. It also does say though it do, uh, does say uh, you shall work six days and rest 
on the seventh. It doesn't say work five days and take a two-day weekend. So I think even people who say, yeah, we want to do uh, extra work. I, I don't tend to, to believe that most people are as much of a workaholic as they tend to think they are because of their sleep habits. They say, oh, I work too much. Well, some people do. But some people, their issue is not that. It's just how they use that work time and how they choose to use that. So just a little excursus there. But the Bible does want us to rest. The Bible does want us to uh, make sure that we um, we uh, get uh, downtime so that we can uh, be able to recuperate. Uh, we need to choose wisely what activities we do when we, we are trying to recuperate, though. Things that actually help us recuperate. Okay, so... Uh, but uh, so to give what is this what is this saying is that when it's talking about laziness it's giving these and talking about not slumbering not sleeping not spending excessive time doing these things it's talking about this not in context to um you know saying well you need to uh you need to not rest in fact you shouldn't you shouldn't even be doing 70 80 90 percent you should be 100 100 or 110 percent work no, it's not giving that sort of comparison. It's almost always saying you need to work hard in opposition to not working hard. The in comparison to the doing the zero percent, the ten percent, the twenty percent, the thirty percent. And I know I'm throwing percentages in there. It's just kind of making that up. But my point is, is that it's it's doing a comparison to exaggerate the point on the fact that look, as a sluggard, you're not doing anything. Uh, and so you need to start doing something. It's speaking to the sluggard. It's not speaking to the person who's doing a lot of work and saying, you need to just go over, you know, overdrive and, and work even harder. So it's not, a, it's not an excuse to be a workaholic, but it is an, it is an excuse to uh, be the, uh, not be the opposite. What is that even? A sluggard is a non-work, a, a work non-aholic? I don't know. Anyways, um, all right, let's move on before I start making up more neologisms, more words. Okay, another way of understanding this is that the thematic emphasis is on the not this sluggard more than on be as productive as possible. So it's really not saying, hey, you got to fire all all eight cylinders, four cylinders, six cylinders, whatever your car is. It's not that you have to go overdrive. The point is, is that you need to not be doing nothing. All right, okay. I don't have that much more. I just wanted to kind of finish up here. I like the words, uh, I like the phrase sluggardly slothful. I don't know. That seems to be fitting for so many things. Uh, I had a few other things I wanted to include here. Richard Baxter, a Christian, uh, wrote, tomorrow is still the sluggard's working day, and today is his idle day. And I like this uh, this saying because it kind of brings out the idea as if, if, if the sluggard won't admit to being lazy, it's just that his shift hasn't started yet. Or yet, or yet, or yet. And so it's, it's kind of like saying, uh, and I'll, I'll put the quote on there again, that uh, tomorrow is still the sluggard's working day and today is his idle day. And I like this because I think so many times we get this picture that the lazy person won't even admit that they're being lazy. They don't even admit that. that. In fact, most of the time when I hear somebody saying, oh, I'm being lazy, it's because they're really not lazy most of the time and they're feeling guilty over the fact they're not nearly as productive as they usually are, uh, which is a funny thing. I, I think I, I read a funny, um, uh, no, it wasn't meant to be funny, but it was, it, it, in my eyes it was funny, a, a description of, of Calvin, and I'm going to make up the statistics. I don't know exactly what it was, but he was talking about with a friend of his who was a bishop, and he says, oh, this has been just the worst, awful, unproductive week. I mean, or I say month. And this month, I've gotten almost nothing done this whole month. And basically, uh, he says, other than the, the, the preaching and the lectures and a little of this like that, he, he gives these three or four things. And if you start counting up what he did for his preaching and for his lectures and so forth. He gives like 21 lectures. He preaches like 14 times or more. I don't remember. These, I'm making these numbers up, but it's just like this exorbitant amount that you're just, you're looking at that, you're like, I can't even believe doing that any month. And yet that was an unproductive month on top of the fact that he was sick so much of the time and all, and having difficulties with the, all the environment around him in Geneva. And everything. it's just, I just find it funny. The fact that he's like, oh, what a lazy bum I was this month. He didn't, that's not a quote, but you know, what a lazy bum I was this month. And, and yet 
it's because he's usually so productive and he looks at that as like a waste of time and so but the the slugger doesn't tend to look at that as as, as themselves as being uh, sl uh sluggardly because they, they say oh i was gonna work but there's a lion in the street you know and so uh uh, it wasn't so difficult to lift up that bowl to my mouth. Well, then of course I would eat plenty to be able to nourish myself. And it's just, it's just kind of funny. But the truth of the matter is that the sluggard, their desire is to not work. They just, they're lazy. They don't want to do it. And the Bible, it comes through pretty clearly on the fact that this is what Proverbs warns us about. The desire of a lazy person has to be something we have to avoid as a wise person. The wise man will find it foreign. It'll be other than, than anything they would do to be lazy. They're not going to be lazy. And lazy is different than rest. We already established that. But a wise person is not going to be uh, found to be lazy. Beware la laziness, the proverb would say, like you would a bandit. For it, a bandit, as a bandit sneaks up on you and overtakes you, a bandit will take everything from you. Uh, while you aren't even paying attention because you're asleep. So last, I'm going to finish up with a proverbial parable. and So it's a bit of a parable. Uh, I'm going to um, go to this. It's a bit of a parable, but it also includes the, the verse we had from before. And it said, I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied to my, to my heart, excuse me, I applied my heart to what I observed, and I learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. And I like this uh, way to end this thing up because it's basically saying, look, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you that was from Proverbs 24, verses 30 through 34. He says, look, I, 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 he's envisioning as if he went past a sluggard. I don't know, maybe actu in actuality he did. I don't know. It's hard to tell whether or not he's giving a, a, a parable uh, telling or whether he's, he's telling anything. But I, probably uh, parabolic and saying, I went past the house of a sluggard, and here's what I saw. I, I, I saw w what would be the results of somebody who is a fool, who has no sense, that thorns were everywhere. They had not been removed. Of course, the ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. This vineyard, which has so much potential, this vineyard, which should have fruit and grapes and, and growing in season, yet it has all sorts of things growing that shouldn't be there, that the, the sluggard should have been productive and taken time to pull that out so that they would have this vineyard, uh, this glorious vineyard. The sluggard should have gotten up and yet they're nowhere to be found. They're, they're asleep. They're asleep on the job, so to speak. Um, and, and the person says, I applied my heart to what I observed, and I learned a lesson from what I saw. And you know what? Those are easy to skip over, but I love how that's said. I applied my heart to it. I learned a lesson from what I saw. Because if you look at something, you observe something, but learn nothing from it, then you aren't the wise man. What does the wise man do? The wise man looks at something, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's indifferent, and he learns something from it. He learns from it. He doesn't just learn, okay, well, uh, this is what happened, as if it's a book report. He says, no, this is what was happening, and here's how I can better my life or others through uh, acting upon that, either for the positive or for the negative. In this case, looking at the sluggard and saying, look, I look at this vineyard, it's terrible. It's terrible. He's in there, you know, snoring away, and as he snoozes, he loses. He loses his vineyard. He loses all the th different things. And, you know, he's basically saying, I should have put this in a thing. He says, you snooze, you lose, you snossed you lost. And so he, he lost out on this potential for the vineyard. And so the, um, the wise man uh, who has no sense, I'm sorry, the wise man is a man who should have sense. He should not be the fool. He should be somebody who has sense. And therefore he does not lay around lazily and let the, the vines of the world choke out the potential of his vineyard. And says, therefore, apply to your heart. Learn from the sluggard and learn from the ant. Learn from wisdom calling out to get off your seat and get going for God, yourself, your family, and for the kingdom. And so I, I, that would be my exhortation. You know, learn from wisdom. Learn from the ant. Learn from the sluggard, the good and the bad. Learn from all those things and get wisdom out of that that calls out to you that says, you know, get off your duff. Get going. Get going and, 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 and do stuff. 
uh, you know, because it'll better the kingdom. It'll better yourself. It'll better your family. It's, it's in your own best interest. But on top of that, in, uh, God has given us something that says, look, and you go out there and do this and be wise. You're going to do great things uh, uh, as a believer uh, for me as well. All right. And that's uh, all I have for this week. So, um, oh, I did have one little last exhortational thing. God can do great things with the person who is willing enough to get going. God can do great things with the person who is willing enough to get going. That doesn't mean you have to, to do, be, have everything perfect before you get going. But are you willing to just go out there and do something and to learn from it? Um, you know, I, I, there's so many times people say, you know, well, I have to get it right before I do it. How about you, you go out there and start doing it and some of it you'll get right. You'll get lucky on some of that stuff. And some of the stuff you'll get wrong and you'll learn from that. That's the best way to learn anyways. All right. Okay, so let me close in prayer, and then I'll see you next week. So let's close right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for these words of wisdom. I pray that we would not be sluggers, that we would not be, uh, we would not be lazy, we would not be slothful, but instead we would be like that ant. We consider the ant that was moving around, but even more so that we, as uh, with the intellect of, of wisdom would go about being productive in an in in, in efficient and effective manner and then doing things that are right, that we're using our head. But more important than, than uh, having the head knowledge is saying, you know, we need to put some bicep, we need to put some, some, uh, some horsepower behind uh, our ideas and uh, our work. And Lord, I pray that uh, we would be willing to get up and go, get going so that we could do great things for ourselves, for our family, and for you. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Well, thanks for being with us, and uh, I will join you again. I'm not sure I'm going to be on next week. I think I'm actually going to take, because I'm on vacation, so I'm going to take a little time off. So we will announce when we're going to be back, but it'll probably be two weeks from this evening that I will just keep going with Proverbs, okay? All right, well, blessings on you, and I will uh, talk to you later.